Hey guys, welcome back to another Dragon Air Silent Gods video. In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing another one of the teams I'm using for the Chaos Shadow bosses in Season 3. So before I get into that, I do just want to say a huge thank you to Dragon Air Silent Gods for sponsoring this video. If you are interested in giving the game a go, please do remember to click the link in the description or the pinned comment and get involved today. So in my previous video, I showcased a team for the Chaos Shadows using the Burn exclusive Ashetius. Um, in this team, in this video today, I'm going to be using another burn team. However, I'm not going to be using anybody to explode the burns this time. So I'm going to be using this one right here. So first of all, we've got Sagamir. So Sagamir is my tank in my team and he is wearing the crown of the unclean artifact. The reason for that is to apply defense penalty and keep a more permanent uptime of that. In terms of sets, he's wearing the puppeteers set to increase the defense of allies around him. So he's built with as much defense as I could get while ensuring I had a good amount of accuracy. So as you can see, he's wearing an accuracy rune. He can place, a, well, has enough accuracy to place attack penalty, accuracy penalty, which isn't relevant here, but also defense penalty. Next up, we've got my healer and I'm using Jillian for this. So Jillian is wearing the staff. However, I could probably comfortably replace this with the horn to increase the damage of the rest of my team. Um, but if it works, don't change it. In terms of the gear she's wearing, she's wearing the Ancestral Protection set to reduce the damage the rest of my team are taking. And obviously she's wearing the Moonlight Mantle Mythic artifact as well. I would love for this to be primary stat enlightenment, but I've not had one yet. So that is my healers. Next up, I've got Holdork. So Holdork is in this team as a buff stripper. So the way this boss works, which you will have seen in my previous video, is the boss constantly buffs itself. Whenever it's got a buff, it takes 20% less damage and uh, obviously those buffs do increase its damage as well so Holdork is in here to remove those buffs as frequently as possible to allow my team to actually continue to do damage and obviously while uh, removing those buffs reducing the damage the boss is taking uh, is dealing as well so next up i've got my enabler which is beegs so beegs is built with a good amount of accuracy and then some damage thrown in and obviously the witch's remains artifact for defense penalty but the biggest thing for Beegs is Beegs places a ton of burns which are going to enable my Durum to do more damage. So in terms of my Durum, as you can see here, built with 90% crit rate, some, uh, some crit damage and a large amount of attack. No accuracy, I don't care about um, Durum placing his own burns at all, he's just there to do damage. And um, he is wearing the uh, mythical artifact that increases the damage you deal to enemies with defense penalty. I don't have any skill timing set up on this team either. Um, maybe I should quickly do some actually. Um, we just set that to 20. I'm assuming that's 19.5. And then just so we ensure that is being used after defense penalty will be up. There we go. So that's the only timing I'm worried about. I don't have an aura for this team at all. I'm actually going to move Holdork closer to the front just to ensure that he's getting the. Um, bonus from being closer to the target if you look at his passive skill here when is here when the hero's skill is still damaged to enemies within three tiles it increases the damage dealt by 50 percent so we'll just make sure we get some uptime on that and um, in terms of other timings obviously i could make it so that my um sagamir and beegs were alternating defense penalty but when i tested this team without timings it worked fine so i didn't really feel the need to mess around and change it because once you hit over 22 million damage everything from there on is wasted you don't need any more than that i will run this through further though like i did in my previous video just so you can see the actual potential of this team in their current builds which could definitely be improved upon and um, just to show you that you could make some replacements and substitutes in this team and it would still be fine the other thing i want to say is i did mention it in my past video as well i did test all of these teams from every single element against the radiance boss that increases damage taken by frost heroes um just because it's such an easy boss i wanted to see how everything else played out against it and it was able to comfortably do 22 million in fact it did more than that a lot of the teams actually did more damage against that boss than they do against their own boss which was really weird but um if you are struggling for whatever reason on this boss maybe give your team a try on the radiance boss it might be easier for you so i'm gonna jump out i'll let this run play through and i will be back at the end of the run to discuss how it went and there you go as you can see we did comfortably over the 22 million damage requirement so that is another team able to hit the threshold 
Um, in terms of obviously replacements here, there is so many different heroes you could bring into this for burns um, to pair alongside Beegs. Beegs is a really good enabler, being only a rare hero. Um, Holdork wasn't really necessary in terms of um, using him. There are lots of different epics who can dispel those buffs, like Fyra, uh, Liko from the Season 1 Pillar of Trials, I believe. Healers and tanks were kind of really unnecessary here. You could bring anybody do those roles i just used who i had you'd be in sagamir and jillian i didn't have to use legendaries but it made more sense to me to build them because having them ready to go for the end game boss was kind of a big part of it i didn't want to waste as much xp as possible um i, I did overcommit on all of these bosses i could have done them with significantly less like on this one i could probably have dropped maybe even two heroes and still been able to hit the 22 million but like I said, that's all that matters. So getting that 22 million damage to get yourself the 2,500 exploration progress is the only important thing for these bosses. So that is all for this team and for this video. I do just want to say once again a huge thank you to Dragonair Silent Gods for sponsoring this video. If you are interested in giving the game a go, please do click the link in the description and get involved today. Once again, just a huge thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.